Yeah, okay. Thank you, Ambassador. Distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, as you all know, the United States is the only Arctic state that is not a party to the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. Although most provisions of UNCLOS are regarded customary international law, the outsider status of the US causes problems in some areas of the international law of the sea. One of these areas concerns the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles. This issue is of importance in the Arctic because the extended continental shelf of the US in the Arctic region could prolong more than 600 nautical miles from the north coast of Alaska. And as the US national strategy for the Arctic states, it is possible that it may hold vast oil, gas, and other resources. Even if all accession attempts have failed in the Senate, the accession of UNCLOS is still on a task list of the US government. The US national strategy states that only by joining the convention, the US maximizes legal certainty and best secures international recognition of its sovereign rights with respect to the US extended continental shelf in the Arctic and elsewhere. Even though UNCLOS gets a boost in the strategy, it is no guarantee that the US will accede to UNCLOS. Consequently, the question must be asked whether it is possible for the US to establish a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles without becoming a state party to UNCLOS. And as Thomas mentioned, the continental shelf extends at least to a distance of 200 nautical miles from a coastal state. If a coastal state fulfills a rather complex criterion, it is entitled to the continental shelf beyond the 200 nautical mile limit. Many are of the opinion that non-parties to the convention do not enjoy such entitlement. One of the reasons for this opinion is that the convention is a package deal with no option for cherry picking. One of the trade-offs one of the trade-offs in the negotiation process that led to the creation of UNCLOS was that the definition and outer limits of the continental shelf were negotiated together with a requirement to share the revenues of the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles to some extent. No mention is made of non-parties in the revenue sharing regime. And in its closing statement at the third Law of the Sea conference, the president of the conference, Tommy Coe, expressed the view that because of the revenue sharing mechanism, a state which is not a party to the convention cannot invoke benefits of the provision on the definition and limits of the continental shelf. Although these arguments sound convincing, it is possible to argue that reality is more complex. UNCLOS is not the only source for the international law of the sea. Customary international law is a source of the law which the United States has focused on in this context. In 1987, an interagency group established the policy of the US on the delimitation of the outer limit of the United, uh, United States continental shelf. This is still the main US policy in the field. The interagency group, uh, its, its decision provided that the limitation provisions of Article 76 of UNCLOS, the provision concerning the outer limits of the continental shelf, reflect customary international law, and that the United States will use these rules when delimiting its continental shelf and in evaluating the continental shelf claims of other countries. More precisely, the group mentioned paragraph 1 to 7 of Article 76 in this context. These paragraphs define the continental shelf and contain rules regarding the maximum extension of the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles. This is what uh, Thomas was talking about. And it is interesting that the 87 policy does not mention paragraph 8, which is the main provision on the role of the Commission on the limits of the continental shelf as Thomas mentioned. 
The Commission's primary task is to examine submissions containing information regarding the outer limits of the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles and make recommendations. The limits of the shelf established by a coastal state on the basis of these recommendations shall be final and binding. One reason why paragraph 8 is not mentioned in the 87 uh, policy could be that submissions to the CLCS are linked to the date of entry into force of UNCLOS for the relevant submitting state. This link is a strong indicator that only state parties can make a submission to the CLCS. Last November, the International Court of Justice, in its judgment in the territorial and maritime dispute between Nicaragua and Colombia, stated that it considers that the definition of the continental shelf set out in Article 76, Paragraph 1 of UNCLOS, forms part of customary international law. The paragraph states that the continental shelf of a coastal state compromises the seabed and subsoil of the submarine areas that extend beyond its territorial sea throughout the natural prolongation of its land territory to the outer edge of the continental margin or to a distance of 200 nautical miles. Unfortunately, for our discussion, the court decided for the purposes of the case between Nicaragua and Colombia that it did not need to cite with all the provisions of Article 76 of UNCLOS from part of customary international law. Another point of interest steaming from the judgment is mentioned by ad hoc Judge Mensa in his declaration. He stated that it is important to note that Article 77 of UNCLOS, which clearly reflects customary international law, categorically states that the rights of the coastal state over the continental shelf do not depend on occupation or express proclamation. Accordingly, it can plausibly be argued that the entitlement of a coastal state to a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles arises ipso facto and ab initio under customary international law, whether or not the state is a party to UNCLOS. <coughs> a related issue that needs to be mentioned is that the United States has concluded bilateral bilateral maritime boundary agreements that delimit the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles without any state protesting against the conclusion of those agreements. This fact is <coughs> often forgotten. If it, if it is correct that the continental shelf regime of UNCLOS is part of customary international law, a few questions need to be answered. Does this mean that the United States can exercise jurisdiction on the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles without paying attention to the revenue sharing system? If so, can the United States avoid the CLCS procedure? And finally, to sum up, although it seems possible to make the argument that non-state parties are entitled to the continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles, many loose ends exists. If the U.S. accedes to UNCLOS, the complexity I've been discussing is history. Less legal complexities concerning the Arctic must be a positive step. So, U.S., just become a member. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>